Hi everyone, this is Glenn Trivitz for Hollywood Piano and we're here with another segment of Piano Talk. And today, because of the situation, we are going to talk from afar. So I'll ask Renee some questions and she'll answer it from the piano. Um, today we're going to discuss the two pieces that Renee recently played for us. The Minuet in G by Beethoven and the Minute Waltz which Renee says is the minute waltz by Chopin. I'm going to ask Renee some questions about both of these pieces and her thoughts on it and her thoughts on how someone should play and practice these pieces. First, we're gonna talk about the minuet in G. And I bet you didn't know that this was a dance, a famous dance at the time. I didn't know that, but uh, yeah, Renee said that, and when you hear it, you can understand, you can kind of see them in those powdered wigs and the, and the women with the big skirts uh, walking around to this music. So first thing I'd like to ask Renee is, what should someone who hears this piece do to practice it? Well, again, use your metronome. Because actually, this is a minuet. It is very very much in tempo because this was a dance. Uh, this particular dance, I play it a little faster than some. Some play it faster than I do. Some play it a lot slower. It depends on how you feel about it because a minuet can be very da di di da 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 da. It can be very stately or it can be a little bit more playful. It can be, uh, uh, depending on the step, if they were step, hold, step, hold, that would be a little slower. But if it was one, two, three, one, two, three, if it was that kind of a step, it's a little faster. So this was a dance? It was a dance, indeed. And you have to remember that at one point, the women wore these huge skirts. And in, the, in those huge skirts, you couldn't walk very fast. So it depended on the era that it was played in, really. Renee, would you have any tips for someone who's learning this piece? I mean, what should they do? How should they proceed? Um, everything in it has a repeat. So you repeat the first phrase, you repeat the second phrase, the third, the fourth. And then when you go back to the beginning, it's just one time and one time for those two little parts. So uh, when I play it, sometimes I don't do the repeats. It depends on where I'm playing and when I'm playing it, how I'm playing it. Um, it depends on the timing, but uh, learn it with the repeats. That's a good thing to learn. Any other last tips for them on Minuet and G? Um, I don't think so. It's just, again, it's a very light piece. And for goodness sakes, don't let your left hand in anything. Don't let your left hand overpower the right hand. And don't let your thumb play louder than the melody. Because you've got piece, this is. You want to hear this, not that. So when you're doing something like that, tip your hand slightly. When you tip your hand, the weight is over here and it will be a little bit louder than your thumb and your second finger. So anytime you do something like that and you want to let your top note come out, tip your hand very slightly and it's beautiful. And if you don't want your left hand to overpower the right hand, you pick up your arm from here. You pick up your left arm and you make it lighter because I've heard so many pianists and all you hear is the left hand. All you hear is the accompaniment. And that's not very pretty. It's a nice accompaniment, but it's not the melody. So that's something that you can really work on. Well, I think that's really valuable stuff. Let's talk a little bit about the minute walls, or as you like to say to me, the minute waltz. What is important for someone to know who might be trying to play the minute waltz? 
Oh, well, first of all, it was written about a puppy dog, a puppy dog chasing his tail. And if you listen, you can hear the dog revving up. You can hear him chasing his tail round and round. And then in the middle part, that poor dog is so dizzy he can't stand on four paws. And that's why it's so it's all it's all different because the dog has to get his equilibrium again before he can start revving up in the second part. Was the minute waltz meant to be played in tempo or out of tempo? No, it absolutely was not. It was minute, petite, delicate, dainty puppy dog waltz. And I can't say that in French. How do you know this? Well, I've read a great deal about Chopin. And he had a lady friend who had a dog that was very funny, and it did chase his tail. But he didn't actually dedicate this to George Sands. He dedicated it to one of his children's students. And uh, she had a puppy dog also, so he thought that would be cute. How should someone play the minute waltz in your opinion slowly and don't push down into the keys this is a very light piece it's a delicate piece it's not a bombastic or a large piece it's it's fun if you've ever seen a dog chase his tail you have to smile so you have to smile in this piece would you suggest that someone who's learning this piece listen to people who might play them with some rhythmic variation? You know, I think we're familiar with some cartoons where it's not, I think there was a Bugs Bunny cartoon where they're using the, the, the minute waltz and it's kind of out of tempo. Do you think that someone should mimic that or just play it strictly in tempo? My best thing that I can tell you is learn it hand separately and learn it so well that you can hear the right hand when you're only playing the left hand. And in your head, you can hear the left hand when you're only playing the right hand. And then when you put them together, they just come together. It's amazing. It really is wonderful. Should the beginning pianist play the very beginning in tempo? The best thing I can tell you about that is start it very, very slowly. Use your metronome. Because the piece is very rhythmic. Even in the middle part where you can take a little bit of variation, it's still very metronomic. And you can like take a little breath before you play something sometimes. Depends on what you hear and what you think, what you feel. But it's very rhythmic. It is a waltz and it's one, two, three, one, two, three. And it does not have to be played at warp speed. It can be played slower and still be very beautiful. Do you think that someone should learn it strictly as written, doing every beat very consistently in tempo? Wait till they get it in tempo. After you get it in tempo, then you can change things. It's, um, if you see the puppy moving faster in some places, um, like this. <laughs> he's revving back up. So you can do all kinds of things with the tempo, thinking of this dog turning and turning and then chasing his tail going round and round and then stopping and then switching which way he's going. So it's up to you, but learn it first of all, absolutely, positively, one, two, three, one, two, three. Then you can do things with it. Renee, thank you so much. That was really interesting and I think very helpful. So if you have any questions about the Minute Waltz, about the Minuet in G, 
uh, please don't hesitate to call us, contact us. If you have questions for Renee, send them to us at info at hollywoodpiano.com and we'll get them to her and we'll have her try to answer those for you. Again, this is Glenn Tribitz for Hollywood Piano asking you to please like our videos. It really helps us out a lot. Subscribe to our channel and comment down below if you found this interesting or if you have questions about either of these two pieces. And again, we say there's no music without life and there's no life without music. This is Glenn Tribitz for Hollywood Piano saying bye for now. Hollywood, that's Ballyhoo.